Welcome to the Women Living Well After 50 podcast. I'm Sulon Carrick and I'm passionate about inspiring, motivating, supporting and informing women over 50 to embrace this exciting time of life. Health and wellness in mind, body and spirit are the foundations for living well, but there is so much more to a life well lived. Each week through conversations with my guests, I'll be presenting topics that will help us all to live well and enjoy life. So join me as we discover new ways to become women living well after 50. Are you ready to start living? What are you waiting for? Let's get started. Welcome to Conversations with Women Living Well After 50. I'm Sulon Carrick and it's lovely to have you join me today. Have you ever felt bold? Have you ever felt like stepping out of your comfort zone? Well, my guest today is has done just that. Her word of the year is bold, and she's going to explain to us during her conversation why she chose that word and what it's meant to her in how she lives her life. Debbie Harris is an award-winning blogger and lives in the small town of Tumbarumba in New South Wales, Australia. She's been married for 40 years to the lovely mathematician with three grown-up daughters and they are keen, avid travellers, cyclists and adventurers. Described by others as a hummingbird on speed, this active mother and grandmother has also received a bravery award from the Queen. You can read all about Deb over on her blog, debsworld.com, and I'd invite you to go and see what she's been up to, especially this year when she's been living bold. So let's go and join the conversation. Hi, Deb. It's lovely to have you join me here in conversation on the podcast, and it's not your first time as a guest, so it's lovely to have you return and have a chat to me. Thanks, Sue. It's always great to chat with you. Yes, so I want to talk this uh, in this episode about being bold. Now, bold, I love that word. It's, um, it just conjures up all these images for me. And I know that you chose this as your word of the year. So before we get into that, I just wondered if you could explain to our listeners what uh, the word of the year is and what your process is to select a word. Yeah. So I I don't do resolutions or New Year's resolutions anymore. I don't think I ever did, but I came upon a word of the year as a gentle, I've written it down, a constant gentle reminder to focus on creating positive change. So in the, in the past, I've had um, the word jump was my word last year. So I used that as a, a jumping board for lots of different ways of um getting through the year. The year before that, it was time, looking at how I could get more time to myself. Uh, Focus was the year before that. And then 2017 was New Horizons because I had just been made redundant. So I was looking at new ways of of living, really. So my word of the year is just something that keeps me on track all year. And I keep every month I do um, an update on my blog about how I've been bold during the year. At the moment, I'm doing the B-O-L-D, the letters, and making um, comments about each of those and how I've addressed things during the month. And it's just really a fun way of keeping myself accountable um, and having a focus and a purpose, I think. Yes, yeah, and I agree with that. And um, I think that it is good because if we have a word that we use that we're going to focus on for that year, it helps us to... um, stay on track and to live our life and usually it's it's a word that we want to aspire to or or we want to bring more of into our life for example mine this year is self and I I, every time I make a decision I'm thinking now how does that tie in with my word of the year how is that going to affect my self and it certainly does help and also you know, I love your idea about blogging or, you know, people could journal it. They don't have to have a blog, but just sort of making that commitment to revisit it every month or every quarter to see exactly if you are living your truth, living your word. And, and in, a, in a way, it makes me do that. It, it just, I, I don't want to give up on that. So it makes me 
look for things that I can do during the month. So it gives me a real focus and a purpose. Yeah, yeah. No, that sounds good. So, okay, why bold? Well, the easy answer, and don't laugh at my shallowness here, I turned 60 last December and I was looking at words that sort of rhymed with, I had the six turning 60 feeling and the next word I had thought of was old and it rhymed with turning 60 years old and feeling bold. That's how I went. That was my original thought. And then I thought that's a bit shallow. And then it actually came to me that, no, actually that's a good word. Um, to use bold, rhyming with old, because there's so many ways I can do bold um, in the year. And, and that can then improve myself, improve my confidence, gain some boldness in lots of different ways. And it's working out really well. Mm. So in a short answer, it rhymed with, um, with old. Well, I've actually, I mean, I love it and I feel a bit envious that I didn't think of that because um, it's such a great word, especially for women in midlife and beyond, because sometimes we hold ourselves back. We've got those limiting beliefs that we talk about and we tend to get in our comfort zone and we don't want to move out of that. But being bold um, mm is such a wonderful word to aspire to and it can cover so many things so that's what I, I love about it and and because you're a friend of mine I've seen such a I've seen you living your boldness and it's great in all different areas and bold is not negative to me no. bold is a positive word it's I'm going to have that self-confidence in myself I'm going out there and I'm going to do things and I just actually think it's a perfect word and I'm not sure you're going to come up with one better next year so you'll have to start thinking now you've got six months to go but I thought last year jumping I, the word jump came to me last year I was turning 59 and I was jumping in a puddle and I thought oh, I could use the word jump. And so that's how I came to the word last year for jump. And that was a really great year because I was jumping all over the place. And every month I did a jump photo where I had to jump uh, somehow, somewhere. And that was really fun. And so bold on top of that has just been just ex ex another great experience. So I don't know how I'm going to top it next year. Maybe I should have a year off and and yeah oh, i'm sure it. i'm sure you will but there's nothing wrong with that ha as having that as a fallback word anyway and decide <laughs> well i want to do that again yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah so i'm not sure i'll be turning 64 next month and i'm not really sure what rhymes with four so i'm <laughs> going to have to have to put my thinking cap on there so okay we talked about how you know um you try to live by the word of the year or or incorporate it into your life somehow um and being bold is and getting out of our comfort zone is not necessarily easy so it would have been a big challenge uh for you to to make that step perhaps so how do you think the word bold has influenced the way you're living your life in 2021 I was trying to think of the word the other day and it came to me that it's like a face accompli. If I tell myself I'm bold or being bold, then I will be bold. And then again, it's a foregone conclusion that that's going to be my year. And so everything I do, every I buy something, I think, oh, is this a bold choice? Or I say yes to an opportunity that comes my way. And that's being bold in accepting invitations and opportunities, getting involved in different things. I'm being bolder with... Um, we're talking to myself. You know how as we get older, we sometimes talk down to ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to not let that happen. I'm trying to be bolder in the way I speak to myself, how I think about myself and how other relationships go. Mm. So it's been um, how uh, the question always is, how can I live a bolder life? And it's, and it's not always easy. Some days I just think, no, I'm collapsing in a heap here. And other days I think, no, I can, I can do this. And I, um, and I try and keep a track of what I've done during the month that makes me feel that I've been bold. Yeah. yeah. And I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, we we set out with good intentions. I mean, we know we're not doing New Year's resolutions. I don't bother with those either uh, because to me they're short-lived. But living your word doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do it 
all the time, but it's a matter of it's a guiding influence, I think. And I love some of the ways you are looking at it, you know, the way you talk to people, the way you're approaching your life is that bold and and the the way you're talking to yourself because we do put ourselves down don't we 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 build everyone else up and then we're always so negative about ourselves so i think that's a great point that you've um raised there Mm. but it's really that's the way i'm trying to to see it um and i've said yes to so many things it's sort of like having another a word of the year saying yes to yes to things mm, um, if someone mm. asked me, like you asked me could you come on the podcast I said yes and yeah. then I think about it later think oh no what am I going to do yeah and then I think no I'm I'm being bold I'm saying yes to things that I would normally have not have said yes to and that yeah. then opened a whole new lot of opportunities and and fun um mm. that I hadn't considered yeah mm. and that you might have missed out on because you might have yeah. said oh no I I can't do that so it's extending you and you're growing as a person so it's it's great so I have this lovely book that says 60 and bold and I write I keep a track of all my things there in and then I can write a post about it yeah oh that's a great idea too because we tend to do things and then I think the other thing is we don't look back on our successes very often do we it's a way of reflecting and I think reflecting is one way of help that helps us to grow um, through these latter years because I know mm. that the I've I've had the most years behind me and I've, you know you're getting to that point where there's yeah. anyway so that's that's how I'm sort of yeah thinking. yeah so um, would you like to share some ways that you've been bold this year? So um, I was asked recently at the lo- local library if I would give a talk about blogging. So it was part of Library Information Week. And they um, invited anyone from the local town to come along and listen. They didn't, there wasn't a huge crowd, but those who came really enjoyed hearing how I talked about blogging. And I, and because I don't work anymore and I haven't for a few years, talking in front of a group of people is can be quite daunting. And I thought, mm. no, I can do this. So I was bold doing that. And then I wrote a, a post uh, on my blog about how, what sort of po- 10 points about that that I shared. Um, so that was good. I've joined lots of blogging collaborations this this year. Um, if someone asked me, would I like to collaborate on something? I've just done a book. I've mentioned one of our friends, Joe Tracy. I mentioned her latest book as being one that I would recommend for readers. So that was a group of 20 other bloggers were all involved in writing posts about a book that they would recommend for summer or winter reading. Um, I've said yes to going into challenges. I've joined photograph challenges. I've even done a photo editing course with some friends, which was really good to push me out of that. Take a photo. Why are you taking a photo? How are you taking a photo? I've made fun of myself. The other day I was invited to help do a promotional video for a marathon that's being held here. And I thought, right, this is the only way I'm ever going to get to do a marathon. So I joined the group and we only had to jog a few bits and then walk back and then jog a bit more, only a couple hundred metres. And then that's going to be filmed and used as a promotional video. And I thought, yay, I've done a marathon. So that's sort of taking, making fun of myself. I've bought lots of bold things. I've bought lots of orange shoes and um, jumpers and lots of bright clothing that that I would never normally have considered thinking, no, I'm getting a bit old for that. And I thought, no, I can do that if I if I wanted. Um, I've had fun with my grandkids. I've gone on the slippery dip and climbed things and not let the fact that I'm a 60 year old stop me from doing those sorts of fun things. Even little things, I don't like the dentist. So I was brave. I thought, yes, I can do this. And so I went to the dentist, had a checkup, had some cleaning done, all that sort of thing. Just to say that, yes, it doesn't have to be big ground breaking things. It can be everyday things that get a bit difficult to handle sometimes. I've been to the doctor about some issues that I should have looked at before. Um, taken myself in hand in a way. Um, and I started a podcast. I must get back to it, but I did start a podcast as well of my blog posts. Um, something I never thought I would do. So little things like that, just putting myself out there, taking new opportunities and having fun really. 
Uh, and it's a good point that um, you make about it doesn't have to be earth shattering because sometimes life itself can be a challenge. So if it's some little thing and you think to yourself, wow, I didn't feel like doing that, but I've gone and done it. I've faced my fear. So what do you think stops us from being bold? Um, I think, especially in our age group, that's a generalisation I know, that we start thinking that we shouldn't do things, that we shouldn't be dressing like this or we shouldn't be saying that or doing this these sorts of things we doubt ourselves and we lose our confidence um we believe we're too old we lose that sense of fun and think that it's not seemly for someone our age to be whooping their way down a slippery dip um and we listen to others rather than listen to ourselves by now we should be knowing who we are and what we are but somehow it it doesn't always work out that way so those sort of limiting beliefs um are really they get into you, don't they? And yeah. so we have, to, we have to get rid of them. And so by being bold with myself, I'm making uh, bolder decisions. I'm thinking about things more. And that's, that's helping, I think, improve me throughout the year. And it's mm. not an easy year that we're going through again. So um, it's given me a real focus and a purpose. Mm. And I think that um, what you were saying about as we get older, or perhaps we're like this all the time, you know, we've been this way, but you, we do think about what other people say, or we mm. do feel that we're being stereotyped and we have to fit into that box. And, and I think on the other hand, a lot of us are trying to say, well, no, we don't want to do that, but it's hard to go against the status quo sometimes, isn't it? And, and it is, you do have to be brave to do things, especially if people are going to say, well, what do you want to do that for? Or, you know, you're making a fool of yourself or whatever. I mean, who are they to say? But, yeah, but the boldness comes from saying, well, you know what? This is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do. And, and without, without being brash or... Oh, no. Or any of that it's to me it's not a negative as you said before it's a I'm looking at it as a positive I'm yeah oh definitely and I mean I feel that I've actually been inspired by you so I think about things now from a perspective of being bold and although I mean I started my podcast last year it's coming up to first year anniversary soon that's gone quickly um but I you know, if I listen to what other people said, or I listen to the voice in my head that said, why do you think you can do this? I would never have started the podcast, which means I would never have met some really interesting women that I've interviewed. I would never have learnt editing skills. I would never have learnt so many things because I thought was going to listen to myself, what my voice said inside or the uh, what other people said. So I think you've got to try and overcome that, which is one of the most difficult ones, I think. It is, in, it is a way that others can then feed off you as well. And so you inspire people with your podcast and with everything you do. And then if you can be influenced by other people, um, and share that around it just it just widens our circle as well we're not locked into a narrow group of people who think the same as us we we widen our net and that has to be good when you're not working or involved as much as you once were mm. no and I think you have to have an open mind don't you you have to yeah. to open your mind to new possibilities and not automatically poo-poo an idea because it might not be something that either you're a bit afraid to do or you don't agree with it or whatever. I think that we've all got to be a little bit more open-minded and accepting of what people do. And I've just got, each month I just look at you and go, oh, she is being bold. She is living her bold life and I'm loving it. And, and you are influencing others in a positive way and that's what we need more of. People who are living their life and leading the way or, or doing something to be a positive influence rather than just sort of being negative all the time because there's enough of that in the world. So um, I really thank you for, for selecting that word. Thanks for those lovely words, Sue. 
Oh, no, I mean them. And, and I do. I just think, as I said at the beginning, I'm a bit jealous that I didn't think of the word myself, but it doesn't mean I can't start living that way either. So as you said, you started off and it, it's a ripple effect. More it's and more ripple. people get involved and you've got a book in there, I'm sure. Um, so now what I wanted to do was talk about perhaps, you know, someone out there might be thinking, oh, Gee, I'd I'm inspired. I'd love to be bold or a bit bolder. So what do you think are your three top tips for living a bold life? Well, this was really quite hard, but I, I narrowed it down to a few. I, I've said a few of them already, is to, is to have fun. If, if you're not having fun doing what you're doing, why are you doing it? So have fun with yourself and with, with others and to laugh and, and have that childishness as a part of you. Um, so number two would be to say yes to more opportunities. Sometimes say yes without even thinking it through, just say yes and then afterwards think it through and think, oh, can I actually do this or what do I have to do and then and work through it. Um, and if I can say this, this last one would be to be bold, be brave and to be you. You really have to be your own, have to be honest with yourself um, and be, honest with everybody else so yeah be brave be bold and be you mm. yeah yeah that's a good point I just want to say something about the saying yes I saw somewhere I think it's a challenge I don't know if I read it in a book or if I saw it on social media but say for a, a period of time whether it's a week or a month or whatever you have to say yes to everything yeah. and um, I think that uh, you're right sometimes we just have to do it and then worry about how we're going to do it later. Because if you don't, if once you make that commitment, I think, you know, that's half the battle, just getting over that saying yes. And then you can, you can stress and worry about how you're going to get it done later, but at least. That's, it, a part of, that's a part of the confidence that you start having the confidence in yourself to say, well, yes, I can do that. Um, how hard can it be? I have a good friend that says that all the time. How hard can it be? Mm, and then mm. and then go ahead and, and do it. But it does it does take a bit of a change in your thinking. And that's been a good thing this year with, with the year that we've had um, is to change thinking and try and think a bit more positively and how I can how I can open up new opportunities and, and have fun. Mm. So yeah, it's mm. and your other point about um, being you. I think, um, you know, we talk about living our authentic life and we can use all these terminologies, but unless you actually do it, you know, what's the value of it? But it is, it is hard. You've just got to forget your comparison with other people. This is you. This is your life. This is what you want. And I think once you start living that way, it's not easy, but I think people start to respect you more for that. And they do become more accepting and then you're happier because you're actually being the person that you are rather than trying to put on a persona yeah. that because just isn't you. I can you make it. And I'm always reminded that I worked for 20 odd years in a, in a men's correctional centre as an education manager and I had to be bold in that environment in a completely different way that I'm being bold now because in in that environment, I couldn't always be the true me. I had to, you know, be someone else. Mm -hmm. And I had to, in those instances, I was probably more the case of fake it till you make it. <laughs> Whereas now I'm actually being the real me mm. more of the time. So, mm. so do you think it's easier being bold when you're younger than when you're older? Or do you think it's something that comes with wisdom and, and ex life experience? That's interesting. I don't know because some of the young, you know, when you're younger, you have so much arrogance and confidence, and and but you don't have the wisdom that goes with it. So I think it's a better, a bit of better blend now that I'm older, in that I have the wisdom to go with it, and I can, I can see more sides to everything, um, mm. and weigh it up to how I can, how I can manage my way through whatever it is. So. I'm glad that I've got to this stage now that, and I am being bold. But in the beginning, when I was younger, I probably would have said I was 
I was bold and didn't think much about it. Why was I bold? How was I bold? Whereas now I'm thinking a lot more. Mm, mm. I mean, um, when we talked in our previous interview, uh, you actually talked about when you you and your husband, the mathematician, uh, took your three daughters and moved over to England for a year. And I mean, even back then, people would have thought that was a bold move, especially in Australia, because not many people were doing that sort of thing. Perhaps it's a bit different now, but um, because you were quite young then, so that and in, and in a lot of ways, I've always been bold. I've always tried to do things outside of my comfort zone when I could. And that one, that trip that we did was way outside our comfort zone. But, um, and I didn't think anything of it at the time, but looking back, I think, oh my gosh, how on earth did we do that? And, and we did. Um, I've always worn brighter clothes. I really like um, bright things, oranges and yellows and reds. Um, not to stand out, but because they lift me, the colour lifts mm. me and mm. then I feel more. So I'm doing that more and more. And I now have got to the stage where people will say, I saw something the other day and it just reminded me of you because it might have been orange or yellow or, or colourful. And they said, oh, Debbie would like this. So I've, I've made a bit of a mark. Well, you have because I actually am wearing an orange and white scarf today in honour of you because I thought, oh, Deb's going to come on and she might wear her signature colour, so I'll be colour coordinated. So there you go. You see, you make your mark without you even knowing it. Ooh. And yeah. um, so have you got anything um, coming up perhaps for the second half of the year that might be a bigger challenge or you're just accepting things as they come ad hoc yeah i i don't have any real plans I, we wanted to go over to see our daughter in england and our granddaughter but that's not going to happen for a while yet so we'll try and get to see our other get around australia to see our other children and and just take things as they as they come uh and maybe get this year out of the way and hopefully next year and the years after will be a bit more we, you can't plan for very much at the moment the uncertainty mm. is just it's just all consuming so um one of my friends though donna has said to me before um, she says be bold or go home so i'll just continue the rest of the year as being bold mm. and um, mm. and just and keep going that way Mm. And what I'll be doing is putting the link to your blog, Deb's World, in the show notes so that people can come over and subscribe and, and follow you in your bold journey and get some ideas on um, how they perhaps can start living a bolder life because uh, I've certainly seen the change in you. I know you said you've been bold, but you have had over the last few years um, a number of challenges personally you know and it's hard to stay bold and outgoing and positive during that but you've really bounced back and I think that um, the word of the year has had a big part to do with that it has it's really it's really been a a great word for this particular year yeah yeah especially after the COVID year well it still keeps going with COVID but uh, last year was extremely difficult um, and still is for a lot of people I mean I'm very fortunate where I am that we've not really been touched by it too mm. dramatically compared to others so it's not always easy to see the positive when life's not going well so I think the other thing is that we shouldn't beat ourselves up upon that and just take take whatever comes and make the most of that those opportunities when they do come. Mm, yeah. mm. I, have so, really good, I have a really good saying that um, I read in a book and it's actually about a, a magpie, a baby magpie. It was in a book called Penguin Bloom, which was a movie. And I just, if I can, I'll just read yeah, it. Sure. It, is really, um, it just describes, I know it's about a magpie, but it describes how I would like to live. She doesn't sit on the edge of life. She does. She dives right in. She's clever. She's strong. She's resilient, and she is bold. She's also mischievous, curious, and very funny. And I, I just love the, the way that sort of sums up really how I would like. To think that I 
and living at the moment. And mm. um, it's a really lovely description. It is. It is. It's something that, you know, we all would like to aspire to. And, and there's nothing stopping us really except ourselves, isn't it? So once we can overcome ourself and just open our mind and heart to making changes, I think that, um, you know, we can aspire to be that way. That's right. Yeah. So, okay, now in closing, um, I'm going to ask you a question that you've probably answered in the previous episode because I ask it to all of my guests. And that is, what does being a woman living well after 50 mean to you? So at this moment, it's all about being bold, but not brash. Um, being open to new opportunities and saying yes to things. And reminding myself that there's still a childlike fun inside and we have to allow that little child to come out sometimes and be surprised at how much fun we can have with simple things. It doesn't have to be much, just simple things. Mm, so, mm. And I think that that's a point about taking the time out to just reflect a little bit like we hear all these things bring out the inner child do this do that and people just give it lip service whereas I think if you take that time and you're actually documenting what you do and things like that because that's going to be lovely for your family but also your, your subscribers and your friends and yourself to see exactly what you've done this year um, to live your word of the year so I you know can't wait for the roundup post really <laughs> don't wish the year away too much no 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 we don't want that to happen so um anyway thanks so much for joining me today deb it's been a pleasure having you again to chat about bold and and how you're living your life and i do admire the way you are and that's why i wanted to have you on to share because you know you can inspire other women to start living a bold life well thanks so much for having me sue yeah and thanks everyone for joining us again for another Conversation with Women Living Well After 50 podcast. If you've enjoyed the episode, I'd love to hear a comment from you or perhaps you might like to share it with a friend because I know that we would all like to be living bolder and uh, more bringing more positivity into our lives. So I'm sure they will get um, some benefit out of listening to Deb and her um being bold year so thanks again for joining us remember to uh, live well and enjoy life and i'll see you when it's time for the next guest on conversations with women living well after 50 bye for now 